The first thing I want to do is thank you so much for being here. Um, this is a really important process and there's a lot to do and we're going to talk a little bit about how we might organize our time together, but uh, we're just so glad that you're here and all of the other crazy urgencies that we know are circling every single face on the screen. So thank you very much. One reminder before I flip it to Matt and introduce myself. Um, this is a public meeting. So this is a board committee. So just remember, we're streaming uh, on YouTube on the channel. So I just wanted to make sure recognizes that and knows that um, what we're saying and sharing is something that um, all stakeholders can view if that's what they're uh, desire is. So again, we're glad that you're here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Matt in just a moment, but I'd like to say that my name is Katie D. Ferrari. I know pretty much every face on the screen. There are a few of you I've interacted with very little, but I do know you. Uh, and if I haven't met you, I'm excited to meet you through this process and really excited to have you um, work with us uh, through the revision process for the handbook. Uh, tonight is about making sure you understand your role um, and our role first, but then your role individually on this group. Uh, and we'll be talking a little bit about some of the matters that we're gonna be discussing together and rules of engagement and all of those fun things. Uh, so know that your answers should get answered, or your questions, excuse me, should get answered tonight. And if not, you'll get to ask those. And uh, with no further ado, um, I'm gonna hand it over to Matt Anderson to let you know how we're gonna introduce ourselves tonight and to introduce himself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Anderson. I am the executive administrator for Culture and Climate. Um, and helping co-chair um, this work. So we are gonna do some introductions tonight um, and we'll try to make those as brief as possible, but we do wanna give you an opportunity to know who's in the room. Um, so we know that uh, back to school is obviously on everyone's mind, um, definitely tonight and will be for the next couple of weeks. So as you introduce yourself, what I'd like for you to do is just introduce your name, um, provide us a role or your role or your job title. And then if you could just briefly share one word that would describe your feelings about the return to school. And then when you're finished, to keep from interrupting one another as we kind of navigate Zoom, if you will just select one other person in this meeting, I, it looks like everyone has their name listed and just call on them and we'll go in that order until everyone, everyone is finished um, and we'll start. So if I get one person to volunteer and get the ball rolling, um, we'll get going from there. Again, remember your name, your role or job title, one word to describe how you're feeling about the return to brick and mortar, um, and then pass it on to someone else. I'll be glad to start. I'm John awesome. Roberts. I'm the assistant director of ECE for elementary schools. And uh, I am excited because I have not opened a school year yet with JCPS. I started in July. And so uh, this is, I've had a lot of anticipation building up to start. So I am super excited. I'm going to call on my colleague, David Allen, to go next. Hello, my name is David Allen. I'm an ECE supervisor for the high school zone. And like John, I have not opened the school year with JCPS either. I started in July myself. So I am uh, nervous and excited. Uh, I really don't know anybody else on here. So I'm going to just pick uh, Mr. Button. I'm BJ Button, currently a uh, principal at Phyllis Wheatley Elementary School, but we'll be moving to a new role as executive administrator uh, in diversity, equity, and poverty uh, here shortly. Um, I'm anxious uh, because, you know, I, I'm still principal and uh, still serving in that capacity and trying to get ready to open a uh, reopen school, but also looking forward to uh, moving into my new role. Um, I'll pass it over to Principal Wright. I was kind of preparing that you might uh, pick on me. <clears throat> um, my name is Duan Wright. I'm the principal of Hart Stern. I have a definitely a dual role here. I want to thank the members of JCASA for joining us. I currently serve as president elect of JCASA. I'm also um, serving um, um, the role of principal at Hart Stern. So uh, I also represent the, the role. Um, Will you let them know what JCASA is? Because there might I'm be. Sorry that don't know what that stands for. I apologize. There we are using jargon. Now, I am just um, took it up on myself that we were all, again, uh, public educators, and we're not. That stands for the Jefferson County Association of School Administrators. Um, and there is a team of us on here that serve different roles. In my role, I currently serve, again, as elementary principal. My word I would offer is hope. I um, hope that we all still are smiling um, in this transition.
I'm going to pitch it over to um, Ebony Booker, who also knew that I would probably pick on her. You are absolutely right. Um, my name is Ebony Booker, and I am the assistant principal at uh, Stewart Academy. Um, and I also serve as the vice president of Jay Casa. Um, and my one word is um, interested um, as far as how I'm, how I'm feeling about everything. Um, and I think I will go over to um, Stephen Stark. All right, um, I'm Stephen Stark. I'm the assistant principal at uh, Field Elementary. Um, so I guess I'm representing the assistant principal elementary role group. Um, my one word is I'm also anxious, <laughs> uh, ex a little excited, a little nervous, all rolled into a lot of feelings. <laughs> so um, I am going to pick on a very old friend of mine, Miss Crystal Hawkins. Hey, Steven. Hey, Crystal. Hello, everyone. I'm our district's family engagement specialist, and I am excited. Um, I don't know if I can really say it in one word. What I'm really, though, is excited to make sure that our families get as much consistent information as possible, because I know that as things are changing, that is really, really difficult. Um, but I just want to make sure that regardless of where our families are, that they're able to access um, really important information. So I am going to turn it over to my um, colleague that's joining me today, Cindy, to introduce herself. Thanks, Crystal. I'm Cindy Baumert. I work for National Center for Families Learning here in Louisville, and we are uh, contracted to support Crystal and all her wonderful plans for family engagement in the district. And I'm overjoyed that all of our teachers are vaccinated and Kentucky's or Louisville's leading the way. And I'm gonna turn it over to an old friend, Kevin Brown. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Kevin Brown, I serve as general counsel uh, to the district. So I'll be here uh, as an, in an advisory capacity to this group. Uh, my word is hopeful. And I will go to Ms. Libby Mills. Hi, I am with Volunteers of America and I'm senior director over the restorative justice program. And my word is anticipation and I will pass it to um, my old friend, Roosevelt Leitze. Thank you, Libby. I am Roosevelt Leitze Jr. I uh, serve in a consulting capacity uh, with Dr. D. Ferrari. Um, I also serve as the chair for the NAACP Religious Affairs Committee. Um, and my word would be prayerful. Uh, and with that, I'll pass it on to uh, Brent Lynch. I'm not sure that you've gone yet. Um, yes, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Brent Lynch. I'm the Director of People Personnel um, in the Department of Culture and Climate. Uh, my word, word is pumped. Uh, I have two kids uh, at home. I'm ready to get them back uh, in school. I'm sure my wife is too, who also works from home and probably ready to get all three boys out of the house. And I will pass it over to uh, Shlanda Gates. Thank you, Shalonda Gates, Social Emotional, JCPS, Social Emotional Learning Department. I also work with the re-engagement staff. And my one word would be enthusiastic. And I'm with Brent. My eight-year-old gets to go to school. Um, I will pass it on to Sandra. I'm Sandra Hensel. I'm the coordinator for MTSS Behavior under Culture and Climate in JCPS. Um, and my word is thankful for all the school personnel who have worked so hard to create um, back to school plans that will really serve our students well in the coming weeks. Um, and I will pass it to Ken Stites. Thanks, Sandra. My name is Ken Stites, transportation specialist for the district. I'm going to steal two words. I'm going to take fast and furious. So, uh, yeah, that's it. <coughs> about cars, which is a lot like buses. Uh, I'm going to throw it to one of my partners in crime, John McClure. Hello, uh, 
My name is John McClure. I'm a coordinator at Jacob Bus Compound, work with transportation. My one word is cautiously optimistic. Um, not sure, uh, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm Jonathan, Jonathan Lowe, Lowe uh, uh, Executive Administrator for Policy and Systems in the uh, Chief of Staff's Office. So um, assisting and uh, you know, managing the process of getting this from where we are to where we want it to be. And um, my word is also optimistic. Uh, I've watched all of the planning that's gone on and uh, participated a little bit. And um, I, think, I think we can do this and do it well and safely. I need to choose someone. Um, how about uh, Deb Amchin? I'm Deb Amchin. I'm the counselor at Brandeis Elementary, and I am here as a representative from Jay Casa as well. Uh, my word is grateful. Were I living in another state, I would not be vaccinated right now. I had no other reason to be vaccinated, but the fact that I am a school employee, and for that, I am very grateful. And with that, I'll pass it on to Calvin Brooks. Uh, my name is Calvin Brooks. I'm currently the eighth grade counselor out the uh, at the uh, W.E.B. Du Bois Academy. Um, my word is uncertain, just uncertain to the point of just not sure what things are going to look like, but excited to get back into the building. So I will pass it on to, I believe, Jason. Is it uh, Nias? Yep. Uh, yeah, Jason News, Principal Ballard High School. Um, my uh, one word, I guess I'm going to steal uh, Sandra's, and, and I'm thankful, thankful that we have the opportunity to, uh, to open up our schools to those families who are interested in returning to in-person. Um, I will turn it over to uh, Dr. Vanessa McPhail. Hello, uh, my name is Vanessa McPhail and I am the Community Affairs Specialist in DEP, Diversity, Equity, and Poverty. Um, I would say my one word is um, anxious, um, but anxious not only for reopening school, but right now I am on um, a um, war path of planning for summer, summer programs. So. Um, most people are thinking about returning to school and my focus right now is on uh, providing programs for kiddos over the summer. I'm gonna pass it over to my former classmate, Dr. Joseph Ellison. Thank you, Dr. Vanessa. I'm Joe Ellison. I am one of the executive administrators of high schools uh, in JCPS at the high school division. Um, my word is focused. Um, just focused uh, to make sure we're prepared for a good transition uh, and focused to make sure our students are successful, um, especially in the high school world, our seniors, that they transition out uh, with a viable plan for their uh, post-secondary learning and for the rest of their lives. So very much focused on the task at hand. I will pass it to Dr. Renee. Thank you. I'm Dr. Renee Shekelhoff. I'm a mental health practitioner at Waller Williams Riverview. I'm also a licensed clinical psychologist. I think the word um, for me is comfort. I feel comfort in going back into our buildings because I know that everything has been, um, policies and procedures have been taken care of, but also going back home because I love my home, but I love my home at school and being with my kids and the staff there. So I find comfort in returning to the building with those that are my second family. And I'm looking to see if there's anybody else. That might be everybody. Is there I think that. I think that is it. So thanks, guys. Appreciate that. We know, obviously, we want to start with that because we already know it's on your mind and there's a lot to consider. So we are definitely grateful for you to be here to talk about the handbook, which is equally important and making sure that's ready to go. And just so you know, for those of you that aren't familiar, that was a that little process and that question was a nod to our restorative practices um, as one of the introductory activities that that students would participate in in a circle. So that's kind of what that was like, just to give you a taste for that as well. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. D. Ferrari and pull up our um, presentation for the evening. Thank you, Matt. 
So a couple of things that I heard. First of all, I hope you guys heard a lot of different kinds of people here to help us with this work. Um, you're going to see that we've shifted the process and you're going to learn about that tonight to really try to ensure that we are going to try to reach just as far as we can to engage stakeholders and, and multiple diverse voices. Um, so I think that you'll be excited about some of the things that we've done with uh, the process. Additionally, I heard a lot of really cool words. I heard everything from anxiety, which we heard multiple times, and that's okay because that's real. Um, and we wanted to hear how people are feeling, but we also heard words like hope and thankfulness, enthusiasm, straight pumped up. Uh, Brent Lynch brought us pumped, um, you know, and people are focused. Uh, we have um, people that are praying for us, which we need. Uh, we will need that, uh, but I can always count on Rev for, the, for that, at least. I'm sure many of you, but definitely him. Um, so, you know, uh, he, we've always got people in whatever spirit uh, they're with and, and part of, hopefully cheering us on. This is a big lift uh, for Jefferson County. And then this is going to be a lot of work for us as a committee. Um, and we're going to walk through that tonight. Matt, if you want to go ahead and pull up the presentation. And we will be happy to provide this to you. And we will also publish it to KSBA as well. So you can get it as a committee member, we'll just give it to you. But also if there's any stakeholder that is looking for it, just know that they can reference it there as well, just like any other meeting. Um, and Matt, you can go ahead and move forward. We've done that. Um, a couple of things that I wanna talk about. We, we have talked a lot tonight about who's on the team and there are even some role groups that we're not with Night that will watch this recorded, that we will be coaching up. Um, but we really want to make sure you understand some of the resources that are on the team that are essentially non-voting members, but people that are here. Um, and you'll know what I mean by voting here in a few minutes, but people that are not necessarily going to be um, actively debating and deciding, but more functioning as support persons for you. Um, Matt and myself are people that are facilitating. Um, it might appear because we are running the, the meetings and preparing agendas and sending you resources that uh, we, we have this special weight or jurisdiction. We actually, that is not what our purpose is here. Our purpose is to convene you. Our purpose is to um, hear voices and facilitate an equitable process that everyone can kind of be heard and share, but also manage such a large number of stakeholders. So Matt and I are going to function in that capacity. You're going to notice that we're not going to engage in debate, but what we will be doing is attempting to prepare and organize meetings for you, ensure that we share feedback with you, uh, and that we stay as, again, um, transparent as possible while also engaging as many stakeholders as possible throughout the process. You also heard uh, Chief Counsel Kevin Brown is with us. Again, Kevin was very wise in saying right up front what his role is, and that is legal guidance for He is here for us to ask questions. He is here to help us if we need to kind of chase down answers to questions that might pertain to anything that we're attempting to do that involves legality, et cetera. And we appreciate his wisdom. But again, you're not going to see Kevin um, in the debates with you. You're going to see Kevin giving us wisdom around the law as it pertains to um, statutory requirements, um, laws uh, that we have to follow as schools, et cetera. We've got, um, and actually he's not listed, but one of the folks that would be on here that uh, would be also a consultant, but he will be able to participate in debate is Brent Lynch. Brent Lynch is our director, director of pupil personnel. So Brent is kind of in charge of all of that um, work that's in one of our appendices around attendance laws and um, how we count students' participation and how we re-engage students and those types of things. He's a great resource for us if we have questions for that. Um, we have our behavior and trauma folks and mental health folks on this call. And they'll be at all of our meetings to help ensure that if we have questions around best practices, in mental health as we're talking about things that pertain to the handbook and all of its contents. Uh, we not only have um, really smart people like Dr. Renee with us, but we also have really smart people like Shlanda from our trauma team, Sandra from our behavior team, um, and other consultants that we feel are critical 
Uh, and you noted, I'm sure that we have ECE um, representation on the team, again, to ensure that if we have questions, we can get those answered by experts and people that know that work. And then finally, we have Jonathan on with us. And Jonathan is our kind of guru of all that is JCPS policy, procedure, and keeping us accountable in regards to um, ensuring we meet deadlines and that we understand, um, you know, as we write things and we draft materials, he is our wise eyes and he will go back and be able to look at those things for us and give us feedback around where we might have um, some, some issues or how we might want to rethink the way we're communicating um, through this document. So again, I want to thank those people for being here because they're less representing stakeholder groups and they're more here to ensure that when we have questions around what research best practice and experts in a certain area would say about the general um, topics we'll be discussing, we have help. Now, the rest of you that are on this call are here because you're also experts, but we're expecting you to be experts in the things that you do every day, like leading school buildings, uh, counseling students, teaching students, um, being an advocate in our community, and all the other various things that people on this call do. We very much appreciate you, but what we wanted to make sure we understood is we have people here functioning as consultants, and we have people here functioning as representatives for their role groups. And as we start to talk through tonight's work, um, you'll very much understand what your um, work is going to look like in those different capacities. So Matt, you can go ahead to the next one. When we talk about our work that's ahead of us, I want to try to de-escalate the group. Um, it has become clear to me, and we are following the same exact timeline we would normally follow for this work. Um, we might be a week or two later than we normally would be. I think everyone understands that, wow, this is a unique year, right? We are in times and we are dealing with urgencies that we've never dealt with before. And when I say we, I mean every face on the screen tonight has a, um, a little piece of that urgency and all of the other things happening, not only just with the pandemic, not only with the social justice context of our community, but then also now the urgency to return to school um, and make that a safe, um, viable thing for staff and kids. So I wanna talk a little bit about uh, things that we would always be addressing with this group, but I'm gonna front load on this slide with the things that we're gonna start with because they are the most urgent. Um, obviously it is critical as a team, one of the first things we're gonna look at or any kind of statutory and policy related updates. This document is laden with statutory language, definitions that are drawn straight from laws in Kentucky, federal laws and expectations, KDE procedures and guidelines. We always make sure that if things change that we are adhering to the most relevant and current language um, and policy that exists. That is one way that Jonathan is a major resource to us. He has already been through and been working on those things so that we don't have to, but we will discuss those and look through those as a group, ask questions. That's one of the easier things that we have to do, but it is something we have to urgently do. The second one is that our exceptional children, our students with disabilities, we have always have changes happening um, with our expectations, maybe as a result of corrective action. Potentially it is um, organizational changes in the um, district that require us to maybe reconsider a process or the way that we've communicated something to our families of students with disabilities and our students with disabilities. So that will be something we absolutely will address urgently. One thing that I'm sure people aren't thinking of is while we don't exactly know what requirements are going to be at the beginning of next year, and this document is for next year's use, we know we're going to have to make additions of COVID related guidelines around mask wearing and social distancing in the event that we are observing all of those things, right? And so we do have guidance that our board approved. We'll wanna make sure that relevant guidance that is included in that, those materials that we are reviewing them again um, and that we are making any kinds of adjustments or considerations and that we're deciding where we'd like to include those and how 
That will be something that we urgently have to think about and address. Um, we also need to make sure that whatever adjustments we make for the first and second read for the board are reaped. And that is our racial equity protocol to ensure that we have addressed all of the areas that will impact our youth of color um, in Jefferson County, specifically our black and brown students. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are really thinking about how anything that we add is going to impact those kiddos. And if we made it absolutely as equitable and um, supportive as we possibly can, and then finally, another element that is so new and gonna be so interesting for us is the virtual school considerations. So regardless of what happens next year, we know that forever now, we're gonna have students that are in school in person and students that can choose a virtual academy option to receive instruction. And so how are we gonna think about what to do for next year as we kind of really we don't know entirely what it'll look like, um, but we're going to need to think about what we want to include for next year and how and where. Um, and again, we have considerations from NTI that very much include most of the things you'd want to think about, at least um, from the behavior response standpoint and progressive discipline standpoint. But I'm sure there are other resources that will go up front in the handbook in terms of virtual students, or do we want to make it in a debt? You know, we can do it whatever way we want, but as this group, Matt and I are going to challenge you to be thinking about what is the best way for families and students to incorporate the guidance for kiddos that aren't going to come back to a building next year um, and receive instruction in the brick and mortar setting that we do need to think about. So those to me are the most urgent items um, that we're going to be kind of confronting. Now there's other items and before anyone gets overwhelmed, you know, I, I think that we, we, we need to remember the fact that we're gonna start with those really urgent ones because they've got to be done before we come back next year. And we've gotta get those board approved, they've gotta be printed, we've gotta get the whole thing rolling because not only does our procedure as a district or a policy, excuse me, say that we have to have it done and board approved because it is a policy, but it also says that we have to be prepared to issue those to students and parents and to schools. And so to be able to do that, we've got to make sure that we print those. And to print those, we have to meet certain guidelines. So what I'm going to say is, if for some reason we struggle to get to these items that I'm going to discuss, we aren't going to not get to these items, but we're going to have to get to these items and ask for board approval and include them in type and print as we move forward into the next school year and potentially get them approved as addendums moving forward. We're just gonna have to see what time will allow. But I think as you see these and I discuss them, you're gonna recognize they're not things we wanna rush. These are things that we will have to research as a team and really talk about in depth. And if we cannot get that done, we will have to talk through this with people like Jonathan and with our board and Dr. Polio and figure out how they would prefer us um, to, to move through. But what I do know from all of those stakeholders is we don't wanna rush these very important things. And so I'm gonna talk through them with you now. Where do these things come from? These, like the items you just looked at, are either requirements or they're things that have um, surfaced as the result of the reap of a previous version of the handbook. They are potentially items that uh, other stakeholders or board members have asked us to look into. And so we will move through these right now. The first one um, that has surfaced from multiple stakeholder groups is the subject of elementary or primary. And for those of you that don't know the difference, elementary would be kindergarten through fifth grade. Primary is kindergarten through second grade inclusive, right? So three, four, and five are not included in primary. Um, just in general, should suspension be available for those students? Are there other things we can do um, or maybe require in advance of that? Th those kinds of questions have been asked and raised for us to research and discuss as a team. One of these, and this has been recurring and we've attempted to evolve with this. Anyone that's seen this discussion over the last few years, 
there is a debate or a discussion around whether our handbook is still as restorative as we would like it to be. We've done lots of national research and tried to bring samples. And every year we try to bring back, or every major revision year, we try to bring back um, exemplars and try to get closer to what stakeholders mean and what they're looking for so that we can make our drafts closer to, um, again, that goal of being as restorative as possible as, as a district, we are embracing not only trauma-informed, but also really attempting to be restorative with the way that we approach our students and supporting their behavior, their trauma, et cetera. Inclusion of additional, this is a REAP um, request that, that was um, generated out of our, um, our revisions last year. And it's really trying to make sure that we're considering cultural competence and implicit bias in the language and the wording that we're using and the resources we're providing, especially around um, tiered interventions. Um, are we being as explicit about including those types of items as possible, not only in language, but also in resources? Um, so we really feel like that's something that we have lots of different experts that can help us go through that and look through with a real critical eye at what is there and what should be added. And another component of that, and um, specifically as we discuss this, which we will, um, a direct kind of byproduct of that from one of our REAP processes is looking at our behavior level language. And again, for those of you familiar with the handbook, we refer to language as a level one through four, or excuse me, we refer to behavior as a level one through four. And so as we're talking about that, the request has been that one, we really consider the subjective nature of language that could potentially be in those descriptors and or have we also given some clear exemplars or it would look like this and it wouldn't look like this kinds of examples. We've had great success with our COVID-19 behavior guidance and our NTI behavior guidance that we've shared with administrators because we use examples and they really like that because it paints a picture for them about what that type of behavior or what that type of situation might look like. And we also feel like not only would that help our administrators that are attempting to consider these things, but also our students knowing what it means to do that. And parents, um, when we say that, that it's a level one and you know, these are the kinds of things that you might see, you know, that your child might have exhibited at school. These are the kinds of behaviors. There are a couple examples now. We could probably do a better job fleshing that out as a team. So those are things that are and additional items as needed. We're going to get to in just a moment because those are things your groups are going to bring us. Um, know that you're going to have a voice in this too, and you'll have the ability to ask questions of me in just a moment, but I want to kind of get to a little bit better resting place and then we'll go ahead and fire off questions. But know that those additional items mean opportunities for role groups to bring concerns forward and I'll give you an idea of what we mean by that. So you've seen my introductory email. Every one of you should have gotten an email from me that included a vision of some of the major shifts we've made in the work that we're gonna do this year as an official district committee. And we've always been an official district committee, but we really tried to change the scope of our work to ensure one, added transparency, really wanting to make sure everyone knows what is going on if they want to, and that voices can be heard as much as possible that we're trying to engage stakeholders and feedback and ensure that again, when we get to the table, because every voice can't be at the table, right? Or we would never get anything done. But by the time we get to the table, each of you representing a group has ensured that you know how your group feels and that you've been able to communicate with that group effectively. When that's not working, let me tell you what that looks like when we don't have that working. 
when it doesn't work, we have people say, well, I never saw any drafts of this thing. I only saw what went before the board of the first read. Or I, you know, I'm a counselor and I'm not calling out counselors. This is just, I just thought of, I have a counselor on my screen. I'm a counselor and you know what? You know, I, they did that made this change. It really impacts my role group. And I don't agree with that. And no one ever asked me when I thought about it. We want to make sure to, right? Because it's okay for folks to choose not to participate or engage, but they should have a chance if they want to, to be able to do that through a very organized system. So first we created subcommittees to address exactly those two things. Getting the biggest, broadest span we can across role groups and ensuring that we're transparent. Any articles or research the committee's looking at, stakeholders can see. And any types of things that we decide to make decisions about, we have feedback from role groups and there's been a process for them to offer that. And if I'm in that role group, I know I had the chance. I don't wonder when that happened or how it happened. Um, I know that it happened because it was well communicated. So those are the things, that is the purpose of these subcommittees. Who gets to have a subcommittee? The role groups we've talked to. So the role groups, I'm gonna give examples. Role groups are parents. And we're gonna talk about um, Crystal's group. Role groups are the community. And you've seen community partners on the call. Role groups are principals, assistant principals, counselors, uh, teachers, of course. Students are a role group. So those are all the different role group examples. ECE is a role group for these purposes. They represent a large number of our students that are very much impacted by the work of this book. So those are examples of role groups. Each of those role groups has two of you on the committee. Why are specific people the faces that showed up tonight? Well, there's two reasons that you might be here tonight representing a group. One reason is because you already exist as a major partner or consultant in that capacity. Another reason would be you're an elected official. So we have principals elect representation. Those folks are who the association selected. The teachers union selects their two representatives. I will discuss groups like parents and students at, at the end, but again, you've either been um, selected like the assistant superintendents like Joe Ellison that support this call um, have been selected by his peers or his supervisor to represent district level administrators. So you've either probably been elected You've been appointed by your supervisor or your union, or you're a, an amazing person like Crystal Hawkins, potentially. Crystal identified herself as the leader that supports our parents in Jefferson County Public Schools. And wow, what an amazing, huge, huge responsibility Crystal wears on her shoulders every day. However, Crystal's role isn't to be, she is a parent, but isn't to be a parent representative. Crystal's role is to support in mobilizing our parents to select their representatives and to support parents as they're facilitating feedback, as they're serving their role group and their constituents, and to really make sure that they feel fully supported and capable of interacting with our group, but also having a safe person that they feel like they can trust that's gonna be a neutral party just helping them connect, make sure they know where, what's going on, that they understand the process, and that as they're innovating their creative ways to reach out to their stakeholders, that she can resource them as best as possible in doing that effectively. Similarly, we have Reverend Lightsey and Libby on our calls. We are not only partners with um, RJVOA, but also Reverend Lightsey um, supports lots of local organizations and also is a critical friend to me and to Jefferson County as we navigate um, certain components of culture and climate. And Suzanne Wright, who is a Jefferson County employee, is here to support Rev and Libby to make sure that if they are having a hard time navigating or getting to what they need, she is their cheerleader and advocate like Crystal is for parents, 
to ensure that they have the support they need and a trusted friend. And Suzanne's work is, she her work is community outreach and supporting lots of different partners of ours through Dr. Coleman's office. And she is great and she will be perfect in that capacity. And then finally, Vanessa Posey is on our call. Vanessa is an amazing person and she's gonna play a couple parts. One, Vanessa is partnering with Dr. Marshall's group and DEP to ensure that um, and help me with engaging students. So when it's time to start to get feedback from our students, um, not only can we use the superintendent's advisory, but Vanessa can also help us access um, our um, justice involved, social justice involved students that are working with Nyree and Matt Kaufman, but also our black student unions to ensure that we're really getting um, a high level of student participation. So that's one thing Vanessa is gonna be assisting with. The other is um, chairing our REAP committee. So, and I'm gonna go back to that last slide, but I wanna make sure you know that Vanessa is gonna do this. And every single one of your subcommittees will have one person. So every role group will have one person on the REAP committee. And why are we doing that? Because it's one thing to have skin in the game through all the decision-making. But it's also really important that we have a member from all the role groups. It doesn't have to be one of you. It can be a different member. You guys can choose that person or it can be one of you. But we want someone from each role group to also sit on that committee for shared accountability, right? As we start to think about whether the decisions that you've made as a group or consensus building, once you've come to consensus and we start to have hard and fast recommendations for our board, we want to make sure that as we go through that process, we have a little piece of every role group there to kind of share, well, why might that, why might we have done it that way? Or, well, I understand your concern, but here's why we feel like it is equitable or it is safely representing that group, et cetera. We want to make sure everybody's voice at that table. And Vanessa is an amazing partner of ours in culture and climate, and she'll be chairing the REAP committee when we're ready to go through that process. And that will be something that is done separately. And we will not go through that together as a group. The only way you will go through that if you're on this call is if you choose to be that representative for your role group. And Matt and I will be getting those representatives from you down, not tonight. So know that you've got time to, to think about that. And Matt, yeah, if you'll go back one, perfect. So now when we're talking about the subcommittees roles and responsibility. And when I say subcommittee, the whole group's responsibility is to elicit feedback and attend, attend to um, questions, attend to um, consensus building with your role group. Yes, of course, huge role groups like let's use the teachers union or even the administrative association. Everyone's not gonna think the same way. However, by the time you get to the table, if we're having conversations about things that are pretty major, as I've, I've listed for you, your you, role groups are gonna have to start to decide what positions they may wanna take on issues. Um, and if they can't take a position, um, explain that and attempt to navigate that um, as, as the people that are sitting at the table, the two representatives will have to know how their group wants them to represent them when we do have to make decisions or attempt to build consensus. Um, it's a really important thing. As the two representatives on this call, your job is to get feedback. You can operationalize that in any way that you'd like. Maybe you decide that you wanna convene some Zoom calls um, at various times with, and people can choose to come and, and offer feedback. Um, you may want to send out um, surveys or Google polls to your constituents. Um, here's what I'm going to say to you about that. I think if you look at some of the list of things that we discussed tonight, I think you'll see that it's really important and it probably will be to your role group that whatever you choose to do, you're maybe thinking of multiple ways to, to do that. Um, you know, maybe you do offer some town halls or Zoom meetings with just your role group where you guys can talk and kind of hash things out and answer questions. Uh, there's going to be times you're going to want to share research with people that are in your role group or updates with people in your role group. And 
Again, you can choose to disseminate information in any way that you choose. You are free to do that. Um, what I would say to you though is, one, I would, I would wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, you're really capturing the voices that are giving you feedback. And you're gonna have to find a way to kind of synthesize that for when we come back together. And the great thing is you're gonna know what topics to prepare. It's not gonna be everything every meeting. So you'll know in advance, what are we talking about during the next meeting? What might you wanna solicit feedback on from your role group? You'll have all of that information ahead of time. When I talk about meetings and documentation, based off of my experience, because I've been a principal in AP and I've been a representative for JCASA and I've, I have traveled those journeys and different roles that I've played. And there's gonna be a couple of things required and a couple of things I'm gonna suggest. You're gonna to have to let us know how many of your constituents engaged with you during the process of feedback between meetings. So if your work, you'll know what your homework is tonight. And so if you maybe get Google surveys and you have a couple meetings, we're gonna to wanna to know how, did you talk to 30 people? Did you talk to 40? Did you talk to 10 or did you talk to 300? Um, just a round number so that we can try to gauge, are we getting there? Are we really getting out there? And if we need to help or provide more support, what might that look like? The other thing that um, we'll wanna make sure of is that you're keeping minutes. We'll wanna make sure the subcommittees, at least we know what the agendas are and there are rough meeting minutes so that we make sure that if, if we need to make sure role groups understand particular updates or if there's particular laws or things that inform your discussion, we'll wanna make sure all those things get covered so that role groups aren't having misinformed discussion, lacking you know, pieces, and we would never assume you'd do that on purpose, but we wanna make sure that they've got all the information they need and no one has any more information. Uh, it's really important to us that those, that those things happen in an equitable way. Those are things you'll have to do. And we'll wanna know when you had your meetings and what you did. Like, Crystal may say we had two town halls on these dates at six o'clock and we sent a Google survey through Parent Connects to ask parents what they think about whatever. Great. Um, things I would suggest, and I'll give examples of why. I would suggest if you do Zooms or things that are virtual offerings that you record those. I don't care. I am not going to need those from you. What I would record those for are if constituents and your role group people can't be there. Let's say they want to hear the discussion, but they cannot show up when you have that opportunity. You'll be able to share those types of things. Again, I'm not going to need them. I'm not going to ask for them. You're not going to have to publish them anywhere. But I just think it's a great way to cover and have kind of proof, if you will, of what your group talked about and what kinds of decision making or debate occurred. I think that's going to be really good for you because I think as people start to learn more and hear more, they're going to want to make, well, what did y'all talk about? Well, I heard y'all met. I wasn't able to get there. What got, what happened? And so at least they can go back and look at it. Um, of course, you'll have minutes, but I think a video recording is a great way to just be able to say, here, go ahead and watch and you can see what your peers shared, et cetera. Um, you know, I think that that's an important component. Um, the other thing that you may want to consider too is keeping actual attendance at the meetings that you have. So um, you can be, a, you know, keep a record of that. Again, I'm not asking for that. I won't ever need that. That's not something I want from you. But if a, if a stakeholder asks a question or one of your role group members, you know, has questions, and, you know, it may be something that at some point you'll want to be able to say, whoa, now hold on, we had meetings on this day and this day, and, and that individual maybe wasn't there. As a person that used to have to answer to administrators or principals, having represent or assistant principals, counselors, teachers, whatever, I think it's really powerful as the person that has to sit at the table and represent their voice to be able to show um, all the things that you did to make an effort to get that voice. Um, and if that's ever questioned, you'll have what you need to be able to um, answer any of those questions. Finally, every time that we meet, and Matt, I'm going to take questions before we move on from this. Um, 
Before we meet every time, Matt and I are going to make an individual Google form for every single one of your role groups. It'll just be for your people. And the nice thing is you can just update it. So Matt and I have what we need and you don't have to be sending us documents and whatever. You can keep your, your other items, your recordings, your, your um, lists if you keep them, that's all yours. We don't need that, we're never gonna ask for it. The only thing that we will put on this Google form for you is what important agenda items, we'll put maybe articles, like at some point we'll be giving you articles and resources for your role group to have access to, for you to share, if we think they're relevant or helpful. Maybe some of you are like, hey Katie, um, I've got a great article on that very topic and I haven't seen, you know, you and Matt, it doesn't seem to be on your list. You send that to Matt and I and we will go ahead and get that to everyone so everyone gets to see it. And that will be the way that your role groups and Matt and I individually share back and forth with each other and we keep track of those very important things like the minutes from your meetings, the dates that you have meetings. Because remember, Matt and I also have individuals that we're accountable to, to ensure that we are making sure we are trying to get as many voices to the table, um, as many opportunities for feedback as possible. So I might get asked, you know, so far total, how many stakeholders have kind of weighed in on these recommendations to this point? Um, that'll be something Matt and I can go back and look at. Matt and I can also look and see if we're worried, like we know you have a massive role group and your numbers are, oh my goodness, Bella. No, guys. Um, excuse me, I've got my little, my little minions back here, my little Yorkshire, Yorkie Terriers. Um, but we'll be able to look and see if we think you might need some help, right? So maybe you are stressing because you, like Jason News, you're getting ready to open a school uh, in a month. Uh, and you're, you're just, you know, you're having a hard time. Well, is there a way Matt and I can, can help you? Is there a way that we can do anything to support and lift the load on some of these initial items? We can kind of be able to see and gauge if there aren't meetings posted and there's not much going on. We can kind of say, hey, we see that you're struggling. What can we do or who can we talk to to support you and get you the support that you need? Again, we're helpers. We don't have a position. Our work is to support you. So before we, and of course, we are going to ask, and I'm not going to ask it publicly, we will go through and individually ask you if the Google Doc is something that you are not able to use, that you have challenges with using, we will make sure that we help you figure out a, di a different way to do it, or if you want support to learn how to do it, we can do that. Again, for folks like Crystal and Suzanne, we've got them helping to ensure that they can help facilitate and, and provide kind of a support to our other parent community groups, et cetera. But if that is a challenge for you, Matt and I will be making sure that we remove that barrier. So do not stress if you're like, oh my gosh, Katie, that is not a way that we're comfortable in interacting with you and Matt. If that's not a way you're comfortable, we will come up with a different way that does make you comfortable. So please don't let that um, give you any anxiety tonight. So before we move forward, let's talk about questions for me. Any questions? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta put you guys in the Brady Bunch to see if I can see anybody. Matt, do we have anything in the chat? Hey Katie, I have a question. Sure. Do we have a max um, or minimum number of parent reps that we can have that can be voting kind of members? Well, good question, Crystal. So every single role group gets two um, that are on the district committee. Um, that's everyone. Um, and I don't have a problem at all with having a discussion um, with the group and, uh, you know, seeing if we want to add um, or if we want to think about that differently, but typically we have always just had a consistent number per role group to ensure that our district committee does not get massive. Um, but there is no limit to how many you can engage in the process. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. No problem. Other questions? 
go ahead and unmute and let it rip if you've got one. Okay, well, that must mean I'm doing a fairly decent job of communicating tonight. So that's good. We're, we're getting towards the end. So for those of you, I was trying to stick to an hour tonight and we're real close. So give me just a little bit more of your patience and we're gonna talk about timeline and we're gonna talk about your homework or next steps, okay? So let's look at, at kind of our, our initial, we're gonna be sneaking into this thing and starting to address issues. Now, I am not going to do anything that is past the, the deadline for whatever's gonna be printed in next year's document. So you remember me discussing with you, we have to follow a timeline to follow board policy and ensure that we have a paper copy of this in any parent or student's hands that want it. And clearly we'll always have a virtual copy, but I have to promise that any parent or student in our entire district, which is roughly 100,000 kiddos and families, has a hard copy. So to get that done by the beginning of the school year, we know this very well, we've been doing it for a long time, we have to backwards map in this way. So do not panic, because if we cannot get through what we need to get through, we will talk through how we want to pace and phase after this deadline for the urgent matters that were on that first screen. So when you revisit this presentation and you want to say, well, what was Katie talking about? Those really urgent things. It says time sensitive and it is on the first slide of the things that we do as a group. You can revisit that, but don't you worry for a second because Matt and I will be micromanaging us visiting those things as we go through these meetings that we have ahead of us. So tonight is the first. You're gonna have take home work to do for our 15th, meeting on the 15th of March, that's two weeks away. Then know we've got a big old gap and you wanna know why? A couple reasons. One reason is because spring break obviously falls in there. And the other one is because we're gonna be open in school, my friends, we're gonna be open in school starting on the 17th and running through that first week after spring break. And no one in this call is gonna wanna be dealing with me or Matt during any of that time. I can assure you, it is not a good time to be getting together to talk about anything. So we're going to be meeting again on the 12th at five o'clock and again on the 22nd. What we're gonna try to accomplish, make sure we accomplish, like have to, have to, have to, with exclamation points, is the urgent stuff, okay? The urgent stuff. And why? Because we've got to have and administrators for how we're gonna do business in the virtual context, in the post-pandemic still context. Additionally, we gotta follow the law. You gotta do that, that's not a choice. We've gotta make sure we're following federal and state ECE guidelines. So we know that we gotta get that stuff done right away. I'm gonna reinforce to you again, does that mean that stuff is more important than anything on the second slide? No, it does not mean that. It just means that we can't start next year without those things being addressed in our handbook. The other items also are things that will require some pretty significant drafting work with our experts, meaning we're gonna research and talk as teams and role groups. And then we're gonna say what we'd like to see in a draft and we're gonna send consultants and experts off to make our dreams happen and get that back to us. Those are processes that take a little bit more time and might require us to extend past and work into next year. And again, either ask for um, addendums or approved components that we will again follow and then publish formally at the next publication, et cetera. We'll make meaning of that because you wanna know why we've never had this happen. We've never been in this position. Uh, we've never had to think about um, PPE and COVID-19 related items in our handbook. Uh, we've never had to think about what in the heck we're gonna do with the virtual academy guidance and how we want that to look in our handbook. And 
you know, those are things we want to try to get right to make sure that everyone understands expectations for when they enter school next year. So hear me one more time. Nothing's more important than anything else, but there are some things that are more time sensitive than others to be able to be prepared for next year and have a hard copy of a handbook in all of our family's hands as board policy would dictate. So that's really important. Something I'm very excited about that I've already talked to um, our chief of staff and I know she's oriented board members and Dr. Polio, unlike ever before that I am aware of, we will also be as we make recommendations, as we work through as a team, we would like to get in front of the board once a month to be able to brief them on things we've already kind of discussed and give them a preview of those recommendations. Why would we do that? Well, we're gonna do that so that when they see it for the first time for the first read, it's not the first time they've heard what our committee has discussed or recommended on an issue. Because if for some reason they have questions, follow-ups or concerns, we can address that before we get to the first read, not after that time. Because I'm sure if you've ever followed this process, the first reads and the second reads, we can, it can be time consuming if we haven't had any time to kind of get in front of the board and give them an idea of where our minds are at. So that's really exciting. We should have two to three of those opportunities uh, for Matt and I to get in front of board members and share what you've discussed and items that we've already resolved. Finally, you can see when our tentative timeline is for these reads. I know it sounds crazy, but for us to have those books printed and, and in someone's hands, edited properly, um, and, re and remember our material materials and productions people do amazing job editing that thing. And this is wonky stuff that you would never think of, but they have to have time to make the table of contents. They have to have time to make the index. We also have to make sure it doesn't exceed the number of pages that we've bid to the publisher, which is already done. That's already done. think about but that's the reason why these dates look so early and we need time to address those items before we get to the actual board meeting go ahead Matt we're going to work on norms when we meet the first time to actually do work so we'll get back to these because you'll be part of building those so how can Matt and I support you I just want to remind you of a couple of things Matt and I are here and we work for everyone on this call we're here to support you. We are here to make sure that all of you have the same resource and access as everyone else in every other role group. We wanna ensure that no one has more or less information. It's really important to us that we navigate this in a way where everyone feels safe and also that nothing's happening that they're not aware of. The second part of this is to connect you to experts and consultants. I cannot say this more use the people that are here as experts and consultants to give input. You can ask them to be at a role group meeting if that would be helpful to you. Let's say you're going to be talking about the trauma resources or there's something about um, something that you want to discuss as it's relevant to trauma. Invite Shlanda or one of her team members to your role group meeting. She will be there and she'll be happy to answer questions. And she is not taking sides here. Her side is kids. Her side is best practice. Her side is research-based. That's what her side is. She'll be happy to show up. Again, if you have questions that are legal in nature, we ask that you send those to Matt and I, and we will vet those with Kevin. And we will make sure that all role groups get those kinds of questions. So if, um, let's say our parent group asks about the legality of some language um, that's part of the discussion we're gonna have around statutory changes or maybe students with disabilities. Okay, great. We get that from Crystal, Matt and I send that to Kevin. We get a response, all of you get it. All of you will get that. We will not just keep Q&A to just the role groups that ask. I'm guessing if her role group asks, other people are gonna have the same question. We'll share those across and that is our responsibility. And if for some reason we mess up, you just need to tell us because I'm sure it wasn't on purpose 
and we will correct it and we'll get everybody whatever it is we might have overlooked or not um, passed on. And finally, as I said before, subcommittee management. If you're struggling, if you're doing what you feel like you need to do and you just cannot get people to give you love back, give you feedback, um, we can talk about how we might help you with that or who we might be able to involve in that conversation to think about how we might best support you. Uh, Matt and I don't have all the answers, but we certainly have access to lots of people that have lots of other answers that we can uh, horn swaggle and get into the conversation and make sure uh, that your needs are met. So think about Matt and I, if you're having challenges like that, we want to be your partner and we want to help remove barriers to make this as easy as possible. Matt, you want to get. Yeah. So this is basically the end of the road for tonight. Again, I'll take questions in a moment to this last part of the discussion, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about looking ahead towards the 18th. First, we want to make sure that the two people on the call are the two people that are going to be representing your group moving forward, or if you're like a crystal, you have and solicit the two that you want. When we start talking about stuff and put and putting statutes in front of people and, and asking critical questions, we want the real players at the table the next time so that they, have, again, the role group's voice is heard. So we really want that you hammer that down. Some of you between when we initially had appointments from your leadership, maybe one of your persons can't do it for a certain reason, or that's not the person now that you guys want representing you. Now's the time to tell Matt and I who it's gonna be, because when we hit the road next time on the 15th, we're making decisions, we're having conversation, we're gonna be you know, breaking out into groups, and sharing, you're going to want the people that you want this process present on the 15th. And whoever's present on the 15th should be able to be consistently present. If you have one meeting that you know is a challenge, I've had several of you that are so on top of it, no, there's one meeting that's a challenge. We will make sure that we address that with you if it's one. If it's half, we've only got four or five. If it's half of them or more, probably you do not need to be the person representing your group. Because if we do need to get to the democratic press process for any reason, which rarely we need to, but if we do, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your voice is heard. And proxies are not the way we can do this. So we just need to make sure that if you need a sub or something, please contact Matt and I, but really it should be a person that's present and heard the conversation and really able to speak for your group. Um, finally, you're going to be seeking feedback from your role groups just this time, just this time. The only feedback you're bringing back to us this time is going to be after discussing those major rocks that I told you that we've got to cover, both time sensitive and not, are there any other burning issues that are of concern to your role group? Is there something to be added to our agenda, our list, time sensitive or not, that would require some research and discussion because we're just not getting it done correctly the way that it is now? So that would be outside of what I've mentioned that's bubbled up through the REAP, that's bubbled up through other board member concerns, conversations or challenges, that are statutory changes in nature, that don't involve level language, that don't involve the restorative nature of it, um, that don't involve adding more equitable, culturally sensitive um, terminology, addressing bias. Those are things that are there. If there are things that are not there that are of concern, we would really like you to bring those back so Matt and I can include them in our timeline and in our, our work plan, right? Because it isn't just about us discussing what is important. We're bringing you what other people have told us they think need to be addressed. You're part of the group. So if there's something else, as you just your role group, uh, we wanna know that. Additionally, 
we're going to probably be, we're not going to probably, we are going to be publishing to those documents resources and things that we will want you to look ahead at so that you can organize your time regarding certain topics and things across these next meetings so you can be effective in scheduling opportunities to meet with your role group. You may want to kill a couple birds with one stone, right? And not meet with them in between every meeting. That's totally cool, okay? But just know that we're going to lay that out for you, what we're discussing at each meeting, so that you can be planning. And we want you to be able to plan effectively and be able to engage your stakeholders as you see fit and as best works for you. All that we'll need to make sure of is those forms are complete to us before the next meeting. And we'll give you a deadline and it will probably be the afternoon of the Friday prior, which is not bad at all. That gives you multiple weeks in every situation to be able to get those completed. Why might Matt and I want these Google Forms complete time? Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna help us build our resource presentation, build our breakout group, Oops, and do all of those things to make sure that we hit the ground running and use your time effectively. If we don't know where your role group is in regard to their position, concerns, pluses, deltas, whatever it is, depending on the issue, it's very difficult for us to ensure that we make good use of your time during these meetings, that we group you in ways that are supportive and helpful, and us reaching consensus or decisions around recommendations. So if we can know what we are going to be dealing with from your role groups prior to, then Matt and I will then inform the way we set up breakouts, the way we admit, we might need to do some research over the weekend because some role groups generate some needs that we haven't covered in the articles or things that we've already provided. So hopefully you can see that that's not to babysit you, but that's to ensure that we can use your time effectively and, and allow people to have really strong conversations that end at the end of the evening in productive recommendations to the board. Okay, that's really what we need to do. And we've got to meet some time constraints. So we're gonna be pushing you to get feedback, but also talk amongst each other. And let's start making some decisions if we are prepared to do so. And if we are not, what do we need? from our role groups and to provide for you to get where we need to go. So what are questions? I see a ton in the chat. I saw the numbers go up and I have no idea what's in there. So let's look at that first, Matt, and then we'll take questions that are not in the chat. I think I think we're good. I think most people just had a question about the, the other person in the role group. So or the PowerPoint. So just know I'm as I put in the chat, I'm going to be sharing the PowerPoint and the overview of the role groups um, and the particular people representing those role groups. So if you have a counterpart, you're, you're clear in who that is and you can see where everybody fits in. Yes. And the other thing that Matt and I are going to share with you is a document that that outlines this entire process. It talks about the subcommittee, their role. It is detailed and narrative. You it, it explains everybody on this committee. If there are changes, we will make those changes because I'll end up sharing that document with you in Google, but I'm also going to send it as an attachment to an email, old school style. But when we share your Google Doc, you'll have a link to it. And if people change, like let's say after today, um, the, um, I don't know, what, any person changes, we will make that change. And anyone that understands Google knows that that's live to you. So if I make a change, you'll be able to see the most current person representing, um, and you'll be able to know who's representing which role groups. The other thing that you'll really like about that particular document is it tells you who are voting members and who are not. Um, and how did we decide that? We decide that because either you're literally named in the board policy as a stakeholder that should be included, but also you are a, you are, basically directly impacted by the document, right? We want to have experts and consultants here, but should they be really voting? No, they can inform and help, but we want people that are voting that are people that are impacted by it. Parents, students, principals, assistant principals, counselors, um, those types of friends 
um, our equity partners, all of those people are here um, to help, you know, they're here to make sure that we get the best product possible. And we rarely have to vote. I don't even remember the last time we did vote, frankly. And Matt and I have been doing this now. I've been doing it for five. This might be my sixth one, uh, but we might. And there are some things that we've got to tackle that I think we probably, the big last one of this size, I think was probably that 16, the year of 16, um, where we did a lot of major changes. Um, this is another year where just because of our context, not only do we have some things the REAP has reflected we need to address, your role groups may find some things, but we've also just got all of this virtual pandemic fun that we have to figure out for the district. So um, it's just a really unique year. So I'll send you that. It's called the SSBIH Review Committee um, Procedure um, or Review Process. And everything I've said tonight is very clearly mapped out for you. That's a resource for you. Also, it will have all of the members of the district committee on it. And again, you'll see indications of who um, those stakeholder groups are that um, have voting rights if ever you need to get to that. Other questions. I did see Stephen. You had your your hand up, doll. What would you? What can I help with? So on the role group clarification, yeah. um, there are ninety some odd elementary schools. When you talk about assistant principals, um, are we talking about levels or just APs as a whole group? Just for like creating subcommittees in my head, because I don't really know middle school or high school as well as I do my colleagues in uh, elementary. So here's what I would suggest, okay? Because again, we're trying to be equitable with the number of seats on the committee and to not make it 400 people because we would never get anything accomplished. Um, what I would suggest to you is a couple things. One, if you are an elementary administrator or counselor, your association recognized that some of our decision-making is really pertinent to you um, this coming year because of some of the things that we're going to be looking at. So we ensured um, and Warren thought it was really important to ensure that the, the elected members for elementary for those role groups were one of the people, right? Because that just makes sense when we're making, we're not making a massive policy decision about suspensions for high school kids. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be looking at that for elementary kiddos. And so we really want to make sure that those elected again, day-to-day -day experts and consumers of the handbook from the administrative side, including counselors, um, we had the elementary um, representation on the actual committee. Um, and then the second one was J JCASA decide, I don't know how they decided, because again, that's their responsibility to do. What I would suggest to you is I think you have a middle school partner, is that correct? Is your assistant principal? Yes, okay. So what I would suggest to you is seeing if there is a person in the organization, in the high schools that would like to step up and help get feedback from those administrators, or clearly you're welcome to engage those administrators too, um, together, separately, that's up to you guys, but that's probably what I would do is, who do I know is, you know, maybe on a subcommittee in the association or talk with Warren Shelton and ask him, you know, who is a pretty active administrator that's not in a level represented that we could engage through the feedback components. So Katie, if I could come in for a second, when we identified the administrators that are on here from JCASA, we did um, include a, a variety based upon equity as well right. as levels. So there should be someone on here. Now I know Ebony Booker Jason is a middle school school. assistant principal, yeah. but she's on here as a JCASA uh, board member. Um, whereas Stephen, you are selected to this seat as an elementary um, principal, elementary assistant principal. That is your role here. Yeah. And I think what he was asking is if he needs to get support on, like, let's say it's an issue that has nothing to do. Well, I mean, he needs to get feedback on any issue, but if it's not specific per se to elementary school and it's just in general, Stephen, what I would suggest to you, if it feels really big and you think it would be more intimate and appropriate to, to, to talk about something by level, then I would suggest finding a partner in the association at the high school level as assistant principal and engage them to help facilitate those uh, with you or separately. Um, but again, that's totally up to your organization. 
And maybe counselors say, you know what, we're not doing it that way. We want to have free town halls for counselors and any level can show up and we're just going to talk about it as counselors. That's totally your decision. But those are suggestions that might help you. And if you have other questions, you know you can reach out to Matt and I will help in any way we can. Other questions? I don't see hands. I'm going to go through my pages here. Okay. For planning purposes, we're always going to stay 90 minutes or less. Always. What that means is moving forward, it is so critical you fill out your forms and Matt and I will be kind of prompting you if we see it's empty. <laughs> like, hey, what you doing out there? But it's because we want to be efficient and we want to come back and we want to be prepared. We want to tell you what we're talking about. We want you to know what's going on. We will give you agendas ahead of time. You're going to get resources ahead of time. We really want to make sure that we are efficient. So for us to be able to honor your time, which if anybody knows me, when I say it's going to be 90 minutes, it's going to be 90 minutes. And so we've got to make sure that we're working together and kind of sharing accountability for being prepared, getting there on time and things of that nature. And I promise if you do that, Matt and I are gonna give you 110% and preparing for the meetings, ensuring they move efficiently and providing you everything that you need to be effective ahead of time or at the time that we ask you to do something. So if we can all kind of promise each other that we're gonna do our best, I think it's gonna go extremely well. If there's anyone on this call that joined us into the meeting, um, know that you can do a couple things to make sure that you don't miss a beat. One of them is you can watch this recording. Um, not only is it live streamed now, but it will be recorded. And you can even fast, you know, fast forward, go skip, do whatever you need to do if there's parts that you wanna make sure that you see. Additionally, your role group, the people that are designated, appointed, whatever, you're gonna get the guidance um, document that I provided with all of the different stakeholders, um, that resource is coming to you. And again, you'll get your individual role group um, little um, feedback form, and it'll remind you what the homework and next steps are meeting on the meeting. And it will also always give you the timeline, the next meetings and all those things. We'll always keep those for you um, contained there. So any other questions for me before we depart? Now make sure all of my friends that are on here, we're gonna be working together for a good little while. And as we said, who knows? Cause we're gonna do our best urgently with the most time sensitive things first, but we know we may have more work to do even after that. I think we probably will, I'm just saying. So please reach out to Matt and I, if you are not gonna be the person. And here's why that matters, because we're sharing all the stuff with the people that have been appointed and communicated with to this point. So if tomorrow, Stephen Stark is no longer going to be representing elementary schools, which I know isn't going to happen because he's amazing. But if it happens, we're going to need to know, Matt and I, who that is so that we can quickly correct that problem and ensure that your people have all of the same tools. Again, we don't want anyone to not have something someone else has, whether it be answers to questions, whether it be resources, articles, agendas, we don't want anyone to feel left out. And Crystal, as soon as we get names from, from you about parents, they will be right on there and in the mix, just like everyone else. Um, so know that it is our effort to ensure everyone has all the information they need and that we give you everything you need to empower your role, role groups to have all the information that they need to give you feedback and, and share their voice. Any other questions? You know where to go on YouTube. You go on Jefferson County Board of Education. That's where this meeting recording will be. If you have any questions for your stakeholders, they can go back and watch this if they didn't tonight. And uh, you'll have all of the things that you need to be dangerous and just a few, you know, in just the next day or two with all of these resources I've promised. And you can share those with holders as well. Anything we give you, you can share. So don't feel like you can't share anything we give you. You absolutely can. That's what we're giving it to you for. 
So know that that is stuff that you can have and share. I've taken more of your time than I intended, but I did not go over my 90 minute rule and I never will. So again, you guys, Matt, you have anything to add? Matt has been taking notes like crazy. We will have minutes for our meetings. That's what Matt's been doing. We'll share those with you as well. And you have a recording. So that's why Matt's been quiet because he's been running the PowerPoint and taking minutes like a mad person. So you'll get access to that. And tonight's PowerPoint will also be shared with you. Uh, on your individual Google role group sheets. And this is on KSBA as well. The presentation will also be on KSBA. No other questions? Okay, you guys are fantastic. That means you're smarter than anyone in the world because you've been quiet, but I've been, you've been engaged and I appreciate that. Um, and again, I look forward to seeing you on the 15th. We will have a lot of very organized work for you to do at that time. Get ready. Get ready for the ride. And again, don't forget, we're enthusiastic, we're anxious, we're excited, we're hopeful, we're prayerful, we're thankful that we're going to get our kids back um, here shortly in person for some, and we're going to continue to engage our wonderful kids and teachers virtually, whichever way they do it, we hope that it's safe and productive. So thanks for being with us tonight, and we'll see you next week.